from the Nourish Caveman and the Healing Foods Method. And it's been a hot minute over here since I've done a live video. And um, today I was having a conversation with one of my patients and the topic was just so good that I could not help myself. I had to bring it to you and extend to the conversation to a wider audience. Um, the reason is that this topic is really one that I keep hearing. It keeps coming to me from um, any directions, pretty much from social media, from emails, from blog posts, and from a lot of my own patients, is that people that have been doing a ketogenic diet and instead of losing weight, they start gaining weight. Or the opposite, they lost some weight at the beginning, they did good for a minute, and then they start gaining weight or they had a stall, and then they just keep gaining weight um, on keto. So I don't know if this applies to any of you watching right now. And if it does, please wave to me, let me know you're there, and let me know that this is a topic that um, hey there, <laughs> um, this is something that actually applies to you and a topic that will be interesting. I am going to approach this topic today from a nutritional point of view. So we are going to talk real reasons. We're not going to talk superficial, kind of like, as I call it, almost woo-woo, like, you know, really irrelevant reasons like my macros are not exactly perfect or I'm eating a little too much protein or I'm eating a little too much fat. There is so much talk of that in the keto community. I address this often in what I share with you because I think that that is not where the value is people. Like you are focusing your energy in the wrong direction if you're starting to think only macros when keto is not working for you. And it's not about how much you exercise. It's not about exactly how much protein, grams of protein or grams of fat you are eating. It's There is something else. So the topic of my um, little talk with you today is about stressors. And stressors is one of my favorite topics because it's very, very important in the picture of our health. And ultimately, the weight loss that we want, as weight loss is just pretty much a symptom of something not functioning quite right in your body and you not being healthy. Because, um, hi Tasha, thanks for watching. So if you were healthy, you would not be overweight because ideally we would be in a healthy way. Hey Pam, thanks for watching. So um, let's go back to our topic. Why do we gain weight on keto? And like my patient say to me today, she's like, I can just gain weight by breathing. I don't even need to eat. And that was a very good point. Um, and I will explain to you how it's actually true that you could be gaining weight by just breathing air, not even drinking water, not even eating any food. But from one day to the other, like you have put on one, two, three pounds. And that's just by doing nothing, even fasting sometimes. So we're going back to the concept of stressors and what they do to our body. So let's think about something like that is commonly considered a perfect keto food like brie cheese. Um, a good, really yummy 80%, 70% fat brie cheese. So what are the macros of this food? It's about 70% fat. There is going to be like 20%, 25% protein, um, and maybe 5 to 10% carbs at the max. So does that make it a perfect keto food or not? The macros are absolutely perfect. So one of the things I do in my practice, I measure blood sugars because they tell us a lot about what's going on in your body. And imagine you have this little piece of perfect keto food breaches. And after you eat it, you measure your blood sugar, who should be nice and stable on keto. And like ideally in your 70s or 80s, uh, that those are good keto ratios. And then all of a sudden, after your keto breaches, your blood sugar goes up to 100, 110, 120. 
and you wonder why. Uh, the other thing is that you're doing keto, you're eating all this cheese, uh, you might be eating other foods. This is not the only problematic one, but it's a great example. And so the weight is not moving and you're doing everything you can. You're exercising like crazy. You're basically going a lot under your calor calories. Um, you are having troubles with ketone trouble with ketones as well sometimes. So you're not eating any carbs at all, but your ketones are low. And then you're not losing weight. So what happens if you eat this perfect keto food breaches? What happens is that this food is a stressor. So most likely you have a sensitivity to this food, which could be a sensitivity to lactose, a sensitivity to casein, or a sensitivity to the mold that is on the crust. Um, most foods are, you know, all foods are fermented foods. Um, sorry, all cheeses are fermented. And a lot of the dairy we use is fermented. So if you have any sort of like bacterial sensitivity or sensitivity to mold or even yeast, you could have a sensitivity to this kind of foods. So what happens when you heat it is that it causes a, a, a reaction and the reaction in your body causes inflammation. So now let me just specify that the reaction is not a histamine driven allergic reaction, but it is an non-allergic sensitivity reaction that shows itself in um, increasing inflammation in the body. So, but let's look at this a little bit better so that you can understand this kind of cascade of, you know, it's like a domino effect, a chain reaction of what's happening inside your body. And it's part of like doing a successful ketosis, achieving keto adaptation successfully. Um, so when you eat something you're sensitive to, it acts as a stressor, right? So inflammation goes up, but what else goes up? Your cortisol. And what does happen when your cortisol goes up? Your glucose goes up because your cortisol, cortisol is like a stress response. So it's a fight or flight response. And when your body hears fight or flight, it wants to run, right? We're running from that tiger. And in order to run from the tiger, we need what? A lot of energy. And so we need sugar. So your body will break down the sugar from either your liver, from your muscle that stored glycogen and puts it back into circulation so that you're ready to save your life and run away screaming. But in reality, there is nothing to run from. It's just a stress response. So you introduce a stressor into your body and that is eliciting a cortisol response. And this response has a whole cascade. It's a hormonal cascade. It's like the famous domino effect. And when you raise sugar, glucose in your body, guess what? What else that also comes up? You guys should know this, keto people, your insulin. And, you know, and then insulin has its own cascade. So not to make this too technical or complicated, but that food acts as a stressor on your body. And when you are stressed out, I mean, stressors can come from many different way in many different ways and another way is psychological stress emotional stress but the physical stressors are what really hey lazzarino thanks for watching it's what really really gets us because toxins are stressors and that food is now acting like a toxin but another like large amount of things that we need to think about and like pay attention to is what other stressors are we introducing in our body and what level of stressor is already in our body. So that means what level of toxicity. To kind of give you a clue here and really cut to the chase is like the more toxic you are, the less tolerance you will have for both foods and environmental toxins the harder it's going to be for you to lose weight because that tolerance is so small that when you introduce another stressor, it's like pushing that button, starting the hormonal cascade, starting the domino effect. And then I was using this example today, right now it's fall and it's really beautiful outside like Alicia in California, Northern California has been really 
beautiful. But what's happening is that there is humidity in the air and the, the leaves that are falling are starting to decompose on the ground and cause molds. And then there is rain that comes and then all the mushrooms come up and guess what? That's fungus. So for people like me who've been intoxicated with mold before, I had a really bad black mold infestation in my old place. And now I'm forever sensitive to mold. So if I walk into the forest and I step into these dry leaves and all these spores and fungus and mold gets up in the air and I breathe it, then it's a stress response and I haven't even done anything but breathe some fresh air. And what happens when you do that is that your inflammation goes up, cortisol goes up, we start retaining water, and we start, you know, get out of ketosis a lot of times. And then we lose the ability to lose weight because your body is just going into this mode where it's holding on to everything for dear life. It's not able to let go of either fat or water because it's toxic and is afraid that you're gonna pretty much drop that in a second if it's gonna like let go of all this toxic load that it's holding on to. So I hope this gives you a bit of a better understanding of like how does our body work on the inside. So sometimes keto or not keto, you're not gonna be able to lose weight and get the results you want until you get rid of the root causes. And nine out of 10, the root cause is toxins, it's toxicity. It's something that's just lurking in the shadows there. And you know, it's what make it, makes you sick. Um, took some notes here to make sure that I covered this topic um, all the way. I think I talked about everything. I just wanna mention again, water retention and the connection to cortisol, I see that in a lot of my patients. And sometimes when you look at yourself and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm bloated, but with water, I feel like I'm retaining so much water. And there could be a very real connection to stressors right there, because as you are stressed and your cortisol is up, you tend to retain more water. So, if you want to lose weight, if you want to be successful with keto, it's not just about macros. It's about really taking care of your body and getting rid of those toxins. And this is one of my very favorite topics. It's also one of the reasons why I'm so successful in the work that I do with my patients. And that's why they're watching here. <laughs> they are the ones that pop up the first as I do these videos <laughs> and chime in. So if you have any questions at all for me, please um, you feel free to post them here. I, otherwise, you can post questions after this video is uh, published, and that will be for Facebook, not for Instagram. I'm doing both <laughs> at the same time as Instagram doesn't let me save the video. But um, it was good to be back here and having a conversation with you guys. Um, thank you so much for following. If you do not follow my YouTube channel, this is where all those videos end up. And you can watch later on my YouTube channel, The Nourish Caveman or Vivica Menegats. That's me. And um, what else? Um, Facebook, the blog, The Nourish Caveman, there are a lot of good pieces of information there. And I'm getting a question here. Sinus inflammation and intestinal inflammation can be linked. Absolutely, yes. Um, I see that in a lot of my patients, and I have several patients who have chronic sinus problems. And what we are coming to like discover after, you know, of course it's a little bit different for every individual because we can generalize that your case is gonna be exactly like somebody else. But what I see is that it's a lot of the times is related to dysbiosis, just like you say, got not just intestinal inf inflammation, but dysbiosis. So that's a gut flora that's in balance. And a lot of times that's due to bacterial overgrowth or mold or fungus or a yeast overgrowth in the gut. And that's something that you would uh, take care of, like not just with the keto diet, sometimes it goes a little beyond the scope of the diet, especially if mold or fungus is involved. 
mold is real you guys and unfortunately it's very prevalent a lot of people don't realize when they have been intoxicated with molds it will affect your gut and i've been like studying and studying the gut again lately because i'm just you know eternally fascinating and more and more layers to understand like the complexity of the microbiome and all this new testing that is done right now it's really cool there is like new tests coming out that um, work with the DNA of the bacteria or the DNA of the fungus instead of testing for direct um, like parasites, fungus, or mold, they look for the DNA. So the new gut testing is really awesome and it will tell you a lot. I started doing that with my patients and you know the results definitely show because we can get a deeper, deeper understanding on how to rebalance the microbiome and what it takes to actually heal it. We do live in a toxic world, unfortunately, and especially situations like now in California with the fires, think about all the stuff that burned that now is like floating in the air in those big, big clouds of toxic smoke. Um, even the old nuclear plant uh, site burned and I don't even want to think about what went up in flames there. So the importance of detoxing is real. Well, I wish you all a wonderful week. Happy Monday. And I'm here if you have any questions. And um, balance the biome, celestial roots. Thank you. I don't even know your name. Can you tell me your name? Because I always see this follower on Instagram and I don't know her name. At least I can say hi by name. <laughs> And um, yes, so thank you so much for following me and watching. And I will see you soon here on the day. Kylie, hi, I love your posts. <laughs> I'll see you here um, on the Nourish Caveman. Bye. It's not stopping the video. <laughs>